What's up guys? So today's video is all about how to use Anki on the wards, aka when you're on the hospital and you're learning things, you often come home and you don't have enough time to learn. So how should you learn to get the biggest bang for your buck? And that's what today's video is about. Let's get to it. So majority of today's video is actually going to be spent on a personal example where I actually show you how I learn, uh, primarily because I'm in the hospital again and I'm going through this process and I'm really seeing what works and what doesn't work. But you should almost always be doing patient-centered learning when you're in the hospital. And what I mean by that is if you have a patient with this particular condition, you want to come home and then read up about that because oftentimes that means so much more when you've actually seen it in your patient. For example, if you had a patient with COPD exacerbation, or if you had a patient that had a certain sickle cell disease trait or something like that, you want to come home and read about it because then you can actually go and ask your patient about the particular things you learn about. For example, you may know that charcot marie tooth presents with hammer toes and you also get a high arch um, plantar aspect. You can actually then, if you had a patient with this, go in the next day and check to see if they have those physical exam findings. And if they do, that's going to cement this um, this association in your head, right? So whenever I have patients with particular conditions, I almost always come home and I read about them and I watch videos on YouTube and make Anki cards from them. Um, oftentimes I'll link the video in my Anki cards and then create a deck for that specific topic. And then I, I will also go through my existing Anki cards and pull in relevant cards that are relevant to that particular condition, such as COPD. So now let me go into an example where I'm physically going through a video about a COPD uh, exacerbation because I had multiple patients with that and I'll show you how I take notes and also make the most of uh, you know naming my source and also going through my existing Anki cards to find the right cards to pull them into my current deck so let's get to it you'll see I start the video and I also adjust the speed to 2x and I increase the volume the next thing you'll see that I do is I actually go ahead and copy and paste the URL of the video into the sources box of my Anki just so I know where all of the information I'm going to get today is going to come from. Next I start the video and as the video is going I often just listen and as you're listening just you know if there's anything interesting that you find I usually take a screenshot and post it in the extra column and then I add the text at the top that the question is linked with. So in this case, you can actually say what happens to heart rate when you have a COPD exacerbation. And in this case, you can see that it would be increased. Then I continue the video as, it's, as the same protocol as before. If something interesting comes up, I take a screenshot and I add it to the extra column and base my questions off of the thing that I just added. And you want to base your questions off of things that you know are important. For example, you may know that acute respiratory acidosis is very drastically different from chronic. And in this video, they explained why the difference existed. Uh, in this case, acute process, you don't actually have time to compensate for the bicarbonate. On the other hand, in a chronic process, you actually have time for the bicarbonate to compensate. And therefore, you see differences in lab values. And so you'll see I'm, I asked a question about that because I know that's something that's very important in terms of understanding of COPD. Similarly, I repeated the same thing, except this time I related it to the VBG, which is a lab value that you often need for COPD. Oftentimes, I always ask myself, why should I be getting this lab value? Why not get another lab? Why get a VBG instead of an ABG? So in this case, I made a question about that because they talked about the fact that if you want a VBG, that's fine. But as long as that VBG is abnormal, you would still have to get an ABG. But if the VBG is normal, you don't have to get an ABG. So knowing this is really important because when it comes to real patients and they actually have these things and you need to know what labs to order, uh, you can know that, okay, maybe you can use a VBG first, but if it's abnormal, you still need to get an ABG. Yet another way I use questions to guide my understanding of the concept. Next thing I do is now talk about interpreting lab values. Any medical student knows that they are going to consistently get pimped on lab values and they're going to be expected to know how to interpret an AG ABG. So in this case, I actually go through the arterial blood glass examples that are shown at the bottom half of the screen. And I go through about like, how would you define patient one's ABG results? I then do the same thing for patient two, and I do the same thing for patient three. And by doing this, I physically do the exercise that I'm going to be doing literally in the hospital. I distinctly remember when I got an ABG yesterday, my resident quite literally told me, you know how to interpret this, right? And I said, 
Um, not really. And I knew at that moment that I need to come back and go through it again. So that's why I do these questions to make sure I understand it. And you'll note that they would talk about PEs and COPD and then just make a simple card about what percent of patients who have a COPD often also have a PE if they come in with an exacerbation. And just knowing that is important because you always want to be considering different differentials. And so just because someone has a COPD exacerbation doesn't mean they don't have a PE. So that's the whole point of this question. I now want to show you how I go through my existing Anki deck to bring in cards that are relevant to the video. I knew in this video when it came up that there is inspiratory strider when you have an extra thoracic obstruction. I knew that I had cards on that topic. So what I did was I went through my own Anki database. I typed in inspiratory, strider, and extra thoracic and found that I had quite a few cards that discussed that exact same topic that was brought up in the video. At that point, I just reread the card to make sure that I understand it and I drag it over to this particular deck that I'm studying. In this case, you can see that I quite literally find my sub eye deck, which is what I'm doing right now. I drag it into week one and I drag it specifically into the COPD section. Now I go back to the original video and I continue watching just because, as I said, I'm not only making my own card during this process, but also dragging in existing Anki cards that I was using. And now, for the remainder of the video, I continue doing what you had seen earlier, which is making flashcards from the video. But you'll see that in the extra column, I also have an image now, which I got from existing Anki cards that had this image, and I found that to be very helpful. So I kind of kept it there while I'm making flashcards from this video. Another key point I often remember when I'm making my flashcards is if a video ever mentions studies or it shows you a graph like this one, you want to make sure to leverage that because then when you're attending a resident asks you, hey, why do we want to keep COPD patients at a uh, level of 88 to 92%? And why do we want to often use BiPAP or CPAP? You can show them graphs like this that show, oh, you know, I have this flashcard that quite literally shows the graph that when you put someone on BiPAP and CPAP, it gives them um, better outcomes. Uh, and when you show them this, and I've had this happen, they're very impressed because you're not just saying something from memory, you're actually showing them the factual data from which that aspect was derived. So just a note to remember, and why one of the reasons I kept uh, this slide that included this graph, which is a meta-analysis meta, uh, meta of different scientific studies. Now, for the remainder of the video, I do exactly what you had seen earlier. I just watch the rest, and I write down important facts for me to know. It's really important for people to know that most COPD exacerbations are actually mostly from viral or bacterial infections. And that's often why, if you have a very severe COPD case, we give antibiotics without even necessarily having a sputum culture. So just things like this really help guide and uh, teach me uh, the way to manage patients. And again, notice this handy graph that shows up. Again, I told you graphs are probably the most important thing in the world, and you'll see why I physically take a picture of the graph and then also make a question about the graph. So that way, the question is linked to the graph, so I have that as data if I ever want to show someone why sm stopping smoking is important. But in the off chance they don't care about that, it's also just important that to prevent future exacerbations from COPD, you need to make sure you stop smoking. That is the number one thing that you can do for your patients to help them out. So this just goes to show you the thoughts that I'm thinking when I'm making flashcards, ultimately how I make flashcards when I'm on the wards and there isn't a distinct you know, learning agenda. I come back and I look at particular uh, conditions that are relevant and I make flashcards based on those conditions. Um, and that's ultimately how I do it. If you guys enjoyed this video, please drop a like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.